I bought a dado stack for the table saw. I wanted this for two reasons. I wanted to be able to make dados because uh, I wanted to start making shelving that doesn't have pocket holes. I want to be able to start, I know I'm the pocket hole king. I know that. However, we got to be able to up our game a little bit. And this is part of that. So dados that per fit perfectly and are more structurally sound and they just look better. I also wanted to be able to make box joints. And while this isn't perfect, this was my third attempt and it is dang close and it looks good. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. We could also make tenons or even tongue and groove with a dado stack. So this dado stack says it's compatible with Bosch, DeWalt, Jet, Sawstop, and other saws. This is a Delta, it should work with this too. These are the two outside blades, metal shims. Then the backside are these chipper blades, three of those and then more metal shims. I'll be taking that out. So from everything that I've read and researched on these things, this side goes out, the printed side always goes out. Chipper blades, make sure the teeth are going the right way. Snug fit, and you wanna make sure these teeth aren't on top of each other, they wanna be alternating. Uh, if you put them on top of each other, it will actually throw everything off and you'll probably bend it when you put the uh, nut back on. So the shims that actually come with this, they're almost they're like this one is really paper thin. I mean, check that out. And they get thicker as you go up in size, obviously. And then and these are even thicker than those. So there's plenty of micro adjustments. I'm building a table saw sled and the, I'm building a table saw sled. This is my fence and I want to put a T-track in the top of it and that's where the dado stack comes in. Yeah. So it's slightly less than three quarters of an inch thick. I actually think that's gonna be really close. So we're gonna try that. Rookie mistake. <laughs> I actually forgot that uh, this wouldn't fit. What I'm going to do is sacrifice the, my zero clearance insert and order another one. And that way I'll have, uh, I can actually use the dado stack and then I'll have this to keep to use with the dado stack. Bye bye zero clearance. You've served me well. Spinny. Why didn't I buy one of those years ago? Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> so easy. So easy. Now let's see if the T-Track's gonna fit or if I need to adjust a little. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that is fantastic. Yeah, buddy. I don't know if I can be any happier with that. That was perfect. On the first try too, having these little digital calipers to help set things up. Now this one come at the recommendation of Mr. Katz Moses. Uh, but it, it's expensive, but as he says, buy once, cry once kind of thing. I wanted to get one that uh, it was accurate and I could use it for a while. So check that out. So as you can see, that's what a dado stack does well. That's what it's supposed to do. It cuts dados. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, click that subscribe button below. If you click the bell icon next to it, you get notified of all our new content. So the next thing I wanna do is half laps. And if you've ever tried to cut those with a single blade, you know how difficult that is. You just multiple, multiple passes, especially when you get wider boards like these. So I'm gonna test a half lap using the dado stack and see how well it works. So when I'm out here working in the wood shop, no matter if I'm cutting or sanding or painting or staining, I like to listen to audiobooks while I work. And that's where today's sponsor, Chirp, comes in. Chirp is an audiobook retailer that offers amazing limited time deals on audiobooks. There are hundreds of audiobooks to choose from on Chirp for up to 95% off. And unlike other audiobook retailers, there's no subscription fee, meaning there's no commitments. You can just choose the books you want to listen to and not worry about a recurring payment. You can go to Chirp's website and find a lot of limited time deals. Specifically, what I wanna call out is entrepreneurship. I know a lot of you are in the business of woodworking or you're trying to get in the business of woodworking. There's a lot of business books on Chirp in that limited time deal section. 
just go to the Chirps homepage, click on that featured deals and find the books that you're interested in. If you check the link in the description below, you can go to Matt's picks, which are mine. So I actually like Start With Why by Simon Sinek, which is how great leaders inspire everyone to take action. This is an extremely good book. I also really like The Splendid in the Vile by Eric Larson. He's probably one of my favorite authors out there, especially for history. It's like reading a novel, but it's factual. So I highly recommend this one if you're into World War II history, specifically Winston Churchill. This is probably on the top one or two of my favorite books of all time. I really love this book. I've also picked out some featured book deals on my page that are under $5 if you wanna check those out. You can get one of these or any other books on Chirp for 50% off using the code 731WOODWORKS50. Just check the link in the description below to take you over there and check them out. I really appreciate that. A big thank you to Chirp, today's sponsor. Go check them out, use that link in the description. It helps me out, it helps them out. Thank you. So these are the ones I actually tested the data on. However, half lap. I need some micro adjustments there just to get everything nice and flush, but that was really fast. It only took a couple of minutes actually to do that half lap. So I just made a quick finger joint jig. I looked up uh, make something, uh, how to make a joint box joint jig, and this is how he did it for the most part. I'll drop a link in the description below to that video if you want to check that out. Not terrible. Not terrible. Third attempt at box joints. Uh, the first two attempts, I'm just adjusting and trying to get everything back uh, right. I, you can see I didn't have it adjusted quite right, but I'm just playing around just to see. I'm learning pretty quick. It's actually really easy to do. It's a little proud. As you can see, it looks good. Check that out, man. I, this is just two scrap pieces and I'm very happy with this on a third attempt and I'm excited to see what we can make now that I can do box joints with the dado stack. So let's say we're making a frame and we want to inlay it with a piece of plywood on the back. You're just going to want that to be quarter inch thick, which is quarter inch thick plywood. And we're just wanting to inlay it on the edge. So I made a rabbit out of my hat. The reason you use the sacrificial fence is so that you can get close enough to this edge so that it doesn't, it takes the entire edge off, but it also doesn't cut into your real fence. And then if this was a frame and we were gonna lay plywood in there on the backside, this would be perfectly flush and we could just brad nail or glue that in to that rabbit. So you can also cut tenons like this. Uh, mortises, you would of course need a drill press or something, but this worked really well for that, just to actually cut that. I would probably need to cut a little bit more off on each side to give it, make this a little more narrow. But for the most part, that worked well. It's probably something I'm gonna start practicing in the future so that I can get better at my joinery methods instead of just using pocket holes. I just wanna learn some more new stuff. The reason I wanted the dado stack initially and the main reason I wanted it was because I wanted to make perfectly cut dados just as such as this so that, look at that. So perfect, such a perfect fit. That's why I wanted this dado stack because you can dial it in that perfect. Look at that. That is one tight seam right there. I mean, this is the why I bought. The dado stack is to cut dados. This is a three quarter inch plywood. You can actually dial it in because three quarter inch plywood is never three quarter inch to where it's a perfect fit. It has a tiny bit of play in there. I, I actually cut it just a little wide so that it would slip in and out easily. If I wanted to make that just even that much tighter, I could actually do that and dial it back in, just remove one of those really small shims. A clamp and glue that on there it'll never go anywhere ever again. It would be there. But this it will make a very strong shelf, or if you're making shelving, this would, would work for that, or many other uses for dados. But that's why I bought that dado stack, and it's awesome. Hey, if you're interested in picking up this dado stack, there'll be a link in the description below. You can go check that out for yourself. You know what time it is. Power tip time. The power tip is if you buy the dado stack, make sure you get a clearance plate that actually fits a dado stack, or you can actually pick up a zero clearance and make your own just raising it up through there. I didn't think about that. I knew I had to have one, but I didn't think about it when I ordered it. 
Now I've used my zero clearance insert to make a dado stack. I'll order some more. You can usually find those on Etsy and other places like that, depending on your saw. Even Amazon sells them for certain saws. So the power tip is to pick up a clearance plate that will accommodate a dado stack. Hey, thank you for watching. Click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next video. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave, bell icon, so that you get notified of all our new content. We're gonna be using this beginner series to learn more and more techniques and better ourselves as woodworkers as we grow together.